It's a pleasure being here with everyone. I'm so glad that you can attend. This is an exciting time for both uh, Roland uh, VersaWorks users and FlexiSign users, since we can now uh, very, very have a very good workflow for the uh, Flexi 10 users with the Ro Roland Metallic printers. So we're going to actually talk about these things and, and exactly how you can uh, move along through a very good workflow. What we're going to cover in particular is we are going to talk about how to update your Flexi sign to the latest version. And as of this morning, I just got word that now it is uh, 10.0.4. Um, and that is good because it uh, is very easy to do. So if you have version 10, we'll show you how to do that for free. And if not, then uh, you can certainly upgrade your software. I'm sure that uh, your reseller would be able to help you with that. Then we'll go into getting a patch that is added to the software that actually activates uh, a special feature that's been added specifically for the uh, Roland Metallic printers. Uh, then when we get into the software, we're actually going to talk about opening the Roland Metallic library, where that is, and how to use it. We'll work with some vectors. We'll create a, a custom metallic color. We'll even go into some raster images, some bitmaps, and we'll combine some vector artwork with bitmaps as well. So this is really a very exciting uh, presentation because it's going to show you many different features that you're going to be able to take full advantage of when you combine the FlexiSign with your uh, Roland VersaWorks. So to start with, let's start with a uh, presentation here. This is just uh, what you need to do. If you have version 10, uh, you will need to go to www.flexisign10.com. And what you will see at that website is the uh, this screen. It will have uh, on the left side uh, Flexi 10. That's what you want to actually click on. And then it will take you to uh, a site that's going to allow you to either upgrade or uh, 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 actually uh, get started using the, uh, the actual product. And Eric, I'm going to need your help here because I can't exit my, uh, my presentation here to get to my, um, yeah, let's, Sorry about this, folks. I'm just going to end that show here real quick so I can get to the desktop. There we go. OK. And we'll just handle it this way. I'll just expand this because we'll go into all of these uh, topics as, as, as well. So that'll be easy enough to see this way as well. But in any case, as we were saying, uh, the first step is actually to go to your uh, Flexi 10 product. So you just go to your uh, Internet Explorer, whatever that is. I'm going to open up. Internet Explorer here, and this is actually the live website. You go in here and you click on the uh, Flexi 10 download library, and that will take you to a second screen that will allow you to either do the full install, so if you're actually purchasing the software and you'd like to do a full install, this is the way to do it, or you can do the free update, and this is very, very good. If you have version 10, this is the way you would actually update it. So you need to do that very first thing. That's very important to accomplish uh, what you're trying to do here to get started. The next thing that's going to happen is you're going to need to go to a uh, special location in FlexiSign that's actually the uh, location where the software allows you to add features or patches to Flexi 10. So this is very easily accomplished, and it's done right from FlexiSign. So the first step was to download that update and install it, then start FlexiSign. And when you get into the FlexiSign software, what you're going to do is go up to the very top where the Help menu is, click on that, and then what you're going to actually see is a place that says Check for Updates. So we're going to choose Check for Updates, and when you click on that, it will start your default web browser, whatever that happens to be could be Foxfire or, or Internet Explorer, or in this case, Chrome, whatever the case may be. makes no difference whatsoever. And it will take you to the actual website where you can download the patch that's needed to get FlexiSign to work with the, the metallics easily. Let's see if this one will come up. And if not, we'll go directly to it. We'll go back to the presentation as well. While that's starting, what's going to, what you're actually going to see in that uh, 
uh, web browser is this window. And you should probably go to the help menu and choose check for updates uh, at least once a month because that will help keep your software up to date. But one of the areas you're going to see is called patches. And in those patches, it's, there's going to be a special uh, feature update that you can download and then install in FlexiSign. It's very straightforward. It walks you through. There's absolutely no, uh, you know, it's, it's very easy to accomplish. When that happens, then what happens is you actually get to a special feature that's now brand new to FlexiSign, and it will look something like this. You will have now an additional swatch that's on your default color table right down here, and this is going to be called the RDG Metallic Silver Swatch, and it's a spot color. In addition to that, you're also going to be adding a new feature to your software. When you now send to BursaWorks from FlexiSign, you can actually access multiple queues or multiple printers uh, with the, these different queues. So in the previous version, you could only access uh, one printer at a time with that queue, but now you'll be able to send to multiple printers. And this is a nice little, uh, little update for you as well. Let's take a look at it in FlexiSign itself. Again, if you look at our, our window here, what you'll see down at the very bottom now, right here, is a new swatch table. Uh, I'm going to just go right above the colors here and pull that swatch table up onto the screen here, if I can. And what this is about is this will actually show you all, all the colors. This with this swatch table, by the way, just up on the screen. And again, as you go down here, you can actually see there's a new silver uh, defaults added, added to your swatch table now. So if you've done everything correctly, this is a good way to uh, to show that particular swatch table. Let's put that back down on the the, uh, the bottom down here. Let's set that back down on here. Take a second. Talking remotely. Good. And you'll see also in the uh, fill stroke here that particular color has been chosen as well. So remember, uh, all, all your tables down here are uh, accessible. You can always close or delete colors right from the swatch if you need to, or add additional colors by just right-clicking on the swatch table. This one was added automatically, and you want to be able to keep that there. Uh, now, the next thing I want to cover, actually, is how do you access all of the metallic colors so that you can use them in your design process. Very easily, uh, and this is very easy to do, any swatch table you have down on at the bottom of your software, just right click on it. And that's going to bring up a menu that allows you to select different options. One of those options is to open a table. So we're going to click on open table. And that's going to bring up uh, a, a menu or a folder area, just like Internet Explorer, with different uh, options. In fact, uh, most of you may actually get to, get to a, a section that actually looks like this, where you have table and library um, in front of you. Uh, if not, then uh, just use this little uh, arrow up here. This is called a move up a folder to get to this location. And then we're going to double click or just click on library and click open. Either way will work. And this is a list of all of the vinyl manufacturers, ink manufacturers, ribbons, and so forth, including, of course, the uh, Roland libraries. So we're going to scroll down to uh, the Roland library. And there it is right there. We'll open that folder. And basically, these are the libraries that you have uh, from Roland. One of them, you notice, is actually called the Roland Metallic Color System Library. We want to choose that one and choose Open. And what that will do is it will actually use all of the Roland Metallic Colors in a swatch table on the bottom of your system here. Now, keep a couple of things in mind. One is you can, again, take that swatch table and lift it up and actually display it on the screen here. If it's a little easier for you, you could actually uh, resize this window. Uh, you can also place that swatch table on the right side or left side, wherever is convenient for you. And another nice way to display that table, if you are going to display it like this, where it's a freestanding menu, is to just right click on it and uh, go to palette view. What this does is it eliminates all the names of the colors and so forth, but this displays all of the colors 
So you can quickly go to a color and let your mouse sit over the top of it and it will tell you what color is being used. So if you prefer to have a floating palette like this, uh, this might be a convenient way to show all of the rolling colors. Otherwise, just take that palette and uh, dock it down on the bottom uh, beneath or above the uh, regular default or wherever you feel is convenient. Now, that's, uh, that's, now we've got the program set up to be able to design and use FlexiSign in this metallic workflow. So let's start out with a couple of really good examples here. Let's just type in a word here. And what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to resize that a bit so we can actually make it a little bit bigger so we can all see it. Okay. Notice everything is just uh, proportional there. Uh, I'm going to pick a different font style. Again, uh, lots of different font styles in the product here. I just typed in I am to go to my, my eyes. And I'm just going to change that to, to that font style. I'm going to make a different, I'm just holding my mouse button down and the control key uh, over the lettering so that I can make a copy. And let's just paint these both the same color. I'm going to actually paint them this uh, blue color right down here. Now, the colors that you see in uh, FlexiSign that I chose from my default menu are just normal RGB colors. So this one is just called blue. I'm not really sure what shade of blue or anything like that. But what I would like to do is maybe make the Roland that I have on the bottom uh, similar to the color I have above, but I want to use a metallic instead. So let's take our our color down up here on the top, you notice I have it selected, and this is something that FlexiSign does that's very, very advantageous for all of you. Uh, there is a capability right here, you'll see a little magnifying glass with the eyedropper in it, and it's called Color Specs. If you click on that, what that does is, because I have the blue selected, it actually shows the selected color uh, in a chart right down here on the bottom. And this is nice because it lets me identify colors. You can do that with any vector color or even some bitmap colors. But the purpose we're going to use it for here is to choose the last tab on the top, which is called Find. And when we click on Find, what that does is that allows us to search for that color blue in all of the libraries that are supported by FlexiSign. So the first step is to uncheck the swatch table because we don't want to swatch. Uh, search the swatch table. That's where the color came from. Then scroll down uh, till you find the Roland library. There's Roland. I'm going to click the plus next to it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down and check right next to where it says Roland Metallic Color System. What I'm doing is I'm, I'm telling Flexi, look at this blue color, this RGB blue, and search the Roland Metallic Color System. Click on the search button and tell me if there are any colors that match or come close to matching that blue. And these are in order from top to bottom as far as closeness of matching. If the number delta E here, for instance, was zero, that would be an absolutely perfect match. Anywhere from zero to ten or so would be a very close match. In fact, you can see on the left-hand side of this menu a little change in color here. This is giving you a, an observation of the original color and the color that we're about to choose. And what I'm going to do in my case is I'm actually going to add this Roland metallic color here. This is the closest match. I'm going to click Add, and I'm going to add that to my swatch table. Now, much, what you might want to do here is be a little bit careful because you notice it added the color in uh, a, as a number, the Roland number, which is actually uh, a series of letters plus a 130 after it, but it added an additional number down here. We want to make sure that doesn't uh, mess us up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click over here and just backspace back to the 130 to make sure it's the official roll and caller number. Very important that you do that. And when I click OK now, what that does is that places on my swatch table down here at the bottom that particular roll and color. So I'll choose my second graph here, my second Roland, and I'll click on my Roland color. And you can see uh, by comparison here, at least on my monitor, how close those two actually are. There's a little bit of a shade difference, but it's actually a very good rendering um, of that shade of blue. So that's an easy way for you to take any standard uh, color that's just a normal RGB color and match that to a Roland metallic color. 
At this point, of course, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to select both of these. We need to actually produce this project. So this could be lettering. It could be any vectored object at this point. And the way we do that is we need to transfer from Flexi to Roland Bursaworks. That's easily accomplished in two ways. One, in version 10, when you install Bursaworks and version 10, an additional icon will appear at the top of your uh, Flexi here, and you'll see the Roland uh, icon, and it says send to Roland Bursaworks. If you don't see that icon, you can always go to the file menu, and you can go down to send, and you will actually see send to Bursaworks here as well. So both of them do exactly the same thing. Uh, I'm going to use the icon at the top and just click on that. Now that pops up our Send to VersaWorks menu, which is very good. You can and give the file name here. You can send just the selection or the entire project. It's up to you. You can choose whatever number of printers you have access to. In this case, we're going to use the BS640, uh, I think. It's a little small for me to read there, but it's a, a nice metallic printer. And we're going to use QA. So I'm going to click Send. And what Webflexi will do is it will automatically transfer the file now to VersaWorks. I'm going to open my VersaWorks, and you'll see in my QA over here, I actually have the file. So it did all of the exporting and everything. You don't have to uh, know, uh, you know, save it as an EPS or do any of those things. It does all of it in the background for you and easily makes that transform. Now, right, now that I'm in my VersaWorks, and let's go ahead and, and uh, maximize that so we can see it fully on our screen. All right, you can see the two colors here. You even see there's a little change in difference there. But how do we know that the second one down here on the bottom is actually a metallic color? Well, there's a couple of things you can do here. Number one, if you look on special items, there's an eye drop right here, and it actually will tell you that that is a, a metallic. It is using the metallic silver ink. So you, that kind of gives you confirmation that it is, in fact, a, a metallic color. In addition, we can click on the job here, and if you want to double click or if you want to, you can go down to settings for that particular job. What you'll see here is, and I will maximize that as well, what you'll see here is that under quality, I'm going to click on quality, we want to make sure of a couple of things. Well, number one, if you notice right now, I'm using a uh, glossy calendared vinyl. Uh, and this would just print two different blues. It wouldn't use the metallic ink. I need to be sure that when I choose my media type here, that I actually choose one that has the MT at the end, meaning the metallics, okay? So when you choose that one, then it will actually uh, uh, tell VersaWorks to use that metallic color along with the, uh, the blue ink. Another way to assure this, and you'll see right here under color mode, it now actually says CMYK, light sand, light magenta, and then MT. So it would print using all of those as you would normally print any uh, graphic, but it's going to take advantage of the silver ink. You can switch that mode if you wanted to. You could switch to this light sand and light magenta, and it would, or CMYK, light sand, light magenta, and it would choose to print that first. You could go back to origin if you wanted to, and then print just the metallic silver. But what I like to do is I'll choose uh, to use all three of them, uh, the regular colors plus the metallic. But I also like to choose metallic silver here just to preview to see what's actually going to be previewing in metallic. So for instance, uh, when I actually grab this uh, magnifier here, you can see there's just a little shade right in that area. And that's showing you where the silver metallic is actually going to be laid down uh, beneath the uh, the uh, color uh, CMYK. So that's kind of a verification of what's actually going to be printed in metallic. It's sometimes a good idea to do that just to be able to verify where the metallic's going down. Uh, one final step that you want to uh, make sure that the uh, VersaWorks is using that spot color, you may want to go down to the file format button down here and turn on convert spot color. What that's doing is it's taking that CMYK that you're actually using to define the blue and associating it with the metallic color that you've selected. So this is uh, important for you to be able to get that metallic look when you're printing with uh, metallics. One final uh, just uh, 
comment when you're actually using quality over here. Under color management, uh, you sometimes might want to choose maximum impact just to get a, a nice rich color, something that's a little brighter uh, when you're working with vectors in particular. So that's, that's kind of the workflow. I know I've taken a, a time here just kind of showing it off and everything, but basically what we're talking about here is a, a, a design system that allows you to assign this color and easily transfer to Burstworks, and then you can take advantage of your Burstworks for printing. Uh, something else that's kind of cool in the, in the software here that I think is, is kind of nice uh, is the ability to define a custom color. I mean, when you really think about it, there are a lot of ways you can use FlexiSign for uh, your printing, but sometimes you need a color that's just a little bit uh, darker or lighter or something like that, and there might not be a metallic color in your standard uh, palette that, uh, that matches that. Well, fortunately, Flexi allows you to actually work, especially with vectors, to, to define some custom metallic colors. And we're going to use do that using what we call the color mixer. Uh, this is actually how the color would look at 100%. So this is the metallic blue that we were just working with. And then we can actually set a lighter color, if we wish, uh, by just changing that spot color. Let me show you how that's done. We'll go to Flexi Sign, and I have my blue selected here. And I'm going to choose my color mixer, which is at the top. It's right next to the one we just chose. Looks like a little artist palette. Click on that, and that brings up the color mixer. So the color mixer allows me to see the color that I've chosen. It shows me how it's being made. So when I click on my metallic down here and I go to my spot color, which is what that is, it shows me that it's a 100% value. That's actually showing me how this color is being defined here. Then, if I needed a lighter color, let's say, I could actually change this a bit. You can see how the colors are actually changing on the actual graphic. I just wanted to be able to show that to you. When you approach the uh, shade, let's say, of the blue that you want, uh, you've defined a new spot metallic using this particular uh, metallic uh, blue that you started with. So to, in order to uh, save that, if you're going to use it over and over again, I'll pull this down here a little closer so you can see this. Basically, just go to the color on the left side of the color mixer, and you can see the name. I'm going to click on it and hold my mouse button down, and I'm going to drag it down to whatever palette I want to use. I'm going to use my default palette. So here's my new color right down here that's been added right next to my original blue. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on that color, and what will happen is it will bring up those color specs again. That's this one right here. Right, brings up the color specs, and here I could actually show you that it is the same color, but it's a lighter version of it. It's like a 69% of that color. So as long as we follow the same procedures as we previously did, we can now use a lighter color in VersaWorks that was uh, really something that's now uh, a new metallic color that we've defined uh, in FlexiSign and we have it permanently on our default menu down here. It's a nice little feature that's included in Flexi that you may want to take advantage of. Well, let's, uh, let's move on now to a little bit different subject. Let's close that up, and let's open up a file here that we've got prepared for you that's a, a nice little file. It's uh, actually just a set of martini glasses. Uh, I know it's a little early in the morning there, but it's, uh, it's after 12 here, so we can use it. And you have a, a bunch of, uh, of, of bitmaps that you might be able to take advantage of that you want to use with the metallic uh, capabilities. Uh, Flexi can open all those JPEGs and TIFFs and all kinds of different formats, so that's another advantage to you. Well, here's a, here's a nice little file that we're going to actually play around with. The reason I like this is because you've got that water in the back behind the martini glasses that's kind of like an ice, picture of some ice. And, uh, and that's kind of cool because maybe if we made that uh, you know, show up in a little silvery look, uh, it would kind of reflect that ice, and so if the water would look more reflective if we printed it. Well, how do we do that? Well, because you actually downloaded that patch, and that's important now. Remember, we added the patch to be able to add a new feature to FlexiSign. One of the things that it did was I'm going to choose my graphic, and, and I have it selected. And in the bitmap menu of FlexiSign, 
there is an additional feature now that has been added, or excuse me, under the uh, effects menu. There's an additional feature that's been added for underbase, and it's called solid or actually variable underbase. Now, what I'm trying to take advantage of here is, is I'm trying to make sure that when I add this underbase to the graphic, and that's going to be an underbase of silver, that it will show through my entire image. So I'm not selecting a, a, a particular part of the image. I'm using the entire image at this point. We'll show you how to do particular parts in just a minute. But in any case, I've got it selected, and I choose variable underbase. And the first thing that's going to happen is, is it's going to ask me over here in Design Central what color I want to use for that underbase. So I don't want to use just a normal color. I want to actually select the Roland uh, metallic silver. And then I can choose a resolution or a choke value. I may want to go up in my resolution here just to provide more um, density to my particular silver or to enhance where it fills in so that I don't get any jagged edges and so forth. But in any case, you'll have to experiment with that to get the best results. I'll just leave it as is for now. Uh, or I can change it. It doesn't matter. It's, you can, by the way, you can type in a value here, too. You don't have to just choose from the, the list that's there. But in any case, when I choose Apply, and this is important, you want to choose Apply to this, what it does is it's actually applying the values that I chose, that silver metallic plus that uh, resolution to this particular image. You're not going to see a change in the image in FlexiSign. But watch what happens now when I send this image over to VersaWorks. We're going to say, go ahead and send that to VersaWorks. Again, you see how easy that is. Just click Send. It goes right over to VersaWorks. We open up our VersaWorks product. And you can see how it's importing it. It did all that automatically. There's our new uh, image right there. And again, we're verifying. Notice the drop right here. That actually verifies that there is silver ink being used for this job. Let's go ahead and open the uh, settings for this particular job. All right, let's maximize that so you can see it. All right, there's our settings. I'm going to zoom in a bit so you'll be able to see the image and, uh, and see what we're talking about here. So let's just zoom up a bit. Okay, now again, you know, you're going to do all the normal things you normally do with VersaWorks. You know, get the media with, set the media, rotate it, make copies, do whatever you're going to do. Important though is the following go to your quality and make sure you have chosen, remember, the MT version. Very, very important you do that. Okay? And here I'm actually printing everything together. You notice over on the right there was a shift in color suddenly. It, it's actually applying a preview to that image so that you can kind of see what's happening uh, prior to printing that. In fact, if you went here to mode and chose just metallic silver only, you will see on the right hand side it kind of gives you a shaded area here. It's a bit difficult to see perhaps in this webinar, but what you're seeing is you're actually seeing locations where silver is being used uh, with this particular bitmap. And that's really cool just to verify it. We, we, did, we chose to do it on the entire bitmap uh, because we just wanted everything to be uh, used with that metallic look. So that's, you're going to get a nice printout here of, uh, of an image that's, that's uh, really cool as far as uh, metallic looking. Well, that's, that's working with a, uh, an image that is the entire image. We did the uh, everything. What if we just wanted to do the martini glasses, or maybe we just wanted to do uh, the background or something like that? What would we actually do? Well, again, uh, what we just did was we went and we said, okay, if we take an image that's a metallic or a regular bitmap, this, this full image here, and we just click on it and apply an underbase, we choose the Roland Metallic Silver in our Design Central and apply that. It applies an underbase to that image. And when we get into our uh, VersaWorks, we actually see a preview here. Here's the original and here's that preview. You'll see the change when you get in there as long as you choose the correct setting in VersaWorks. And remember, you can always verify it. Just choose the silver only and you'll actually see a verification of that. So just keep those steps in mind because it's a good way to kind of um, check before you print. You don't want to waste any material or any steps in this particular case. But let's say we want to do the following. We'll take that same image, but we'd like to just maybe add metallic to the uh, martini glasses. 
We just want all three of the martini glasses to have a metallic look, but we don't want the background to have a metallic look. How do we do that? Well, what we're going to do is we're actually going to work in FlexiSign and take advantage of some of the design capabilities in FlexiSign. There's a few ways to do this. Uh, sometimes in a bitmap, and let me undo this so we don't have metallic behind it. Make sure it's uh, completely undone. I just want to make sure I don't have any metallic behind that graphic. The other way to do that would be to just close that file and open up a new one. But I just want to make sure. I don't think there is any under there. Okay, good, there isn't. Uh, and I verify that over here. See, there's no metallics behind it. Uh, there's a couple of ways that you can select areas where you want to apply a particular um, metallic look. Uh, FlexiSign does have some uh, abilities to work with bitmaps. These tools up here, some which look quite familiar to you, uh, Magic Wand, Selector Tool, and so forth, you might not see those in your edition, but the way you get to them is you can just go to any uh, icon on the top here, right-click on it, and it will bring up uh, a menu that allows you to turn on and off different icons. One of them is the bitmap editing menu. So I've just turned that on because I want to use my bitmap editing tools. So one way that you could do apply a metallic would be to go ahead and take the magic wand and maybe select uh, a certain area. Again, your selection uh, tolerance is over here. So you can see it selected quite a bit of my uh, uh, martini glass here. Again, I could, I could lower this tolerance. It typically starts out at about 32. 64 is the highest. Uh, it can go down. The lower the number that you choose, the less that is selected. The higher the number, the uh, more that is selected. So you have a range of 0 to 255. I'm going to go down a little bit, hold my Shift key down, and again, you can just go in a different area over here if you wanted to and click. And what you would do is you're adding to the selecting. See how it's selecting more of an area? So if you want to add more of, a, of an area, just keep selecting it until you get uh, as much of the glass selected as you wish. Once you've got selected here, you can see this is a marquee. Well, we, we're not going to use the marquee for applying the silver. We really need to change that into a vector piece of artwork. Well, that's easily done in FlexiSign. Even though I have this selected as a marquee, like I would in uh, Photoshop or something like that, in Flexi, under the bitmap menu, you can actually go down to a selection called Convert Marquee to Shape. And watch what happens. When I click on that, what it does is it literally uh, converted all of that selected area in there into a vector artwork. That's literally vector artwork. I can fill it with whatever color I want. And of course, the color that I'm looking for to fill that, if I want to make it silver in that area, is my silver color, the one that's been added to my swatch table. So I change it to silver. I can then move that uh, image, that particular area there if I wish. I can uh, right click on it and I can actually change that and move it to the back if I want. Or I can move it to the front. You probably want to move it to the back. You can see I can go both ways, right? Just order back or forth, right? Okay, so once you have that selected, just right click on it and then uh, move it to the back. You'll see that uh, these little white dots here actually show that that's still selected. Just go to your uh, uh, menu here now and select both objects. I'm talking about the silver and the bitmap together. Go to my bitmap menu here. And uh, actually what I want to do is, is select just that uh, background there. Sorry, my fault. No problem. Remember here, order, go to the back. See that? And again, you can just take that silver right there and uh, go to your effects menu and choose under base and variable under base just like you did earlier. And then make sure the silver is selected and apply it. And what's, what's happening is, is it's going to take that, that uh, metallic uh, silver there and apply it to that part of the bitmap. What that does is that means that uh, as I move that to the back of my graphic, and I definitely want to move this piece to the back, right? I want to make sure that my graphic is on top and that my uh, metallic is behind it, right? So I'm going to move this to the front. Just take my graphic and move it to the front, right? And then when I go to uh, actually send this file to VersaWorks, you click on Send to VersaWorks, just like we've been doing, 
You'll see the file will show up in my VersaWorks product. We'll bring that up. There's my file. This is the one that uh, is being imported here, right? So I'm going to actually choose to set that up. Again, we verify that it does have metallic ink associated with it. We'll expand that so that you can see it. All right, let's zoom up. Get it nice and big so you can see this uh, properly. There you go. Again, we're going to go to quality, make sure that we have our MT selected. Got it. We can verify what's being actually made into silver by just clicking here and choosing uh, our silver metallic. And you'll see whatever is being actually chosen here. Made a mistake, that's OK. This is another nice thing about Flexi is you can actually, uh, if you make a mistake, it's perfectly fine. This is, it's good that I verified it that way because that way I can actually see what I'm trying to accomplish. So again, if I go back to my, my Flexi, and I've made a mistake on something, that's not a problem. We just go back to Flexi. Let me go back there one second. And I'm trying to verify what we've actually got composed here. I'm going to move my bitmap over. You can see the silver is beneath it right there. OK, everything looks OK. So I'm going to go back. We want to make sure that we've selected both pieces. And again, that piece right there is the only thing we want to apply the silver to, and that was the mistake. So what we want to do then is we want to say, look, this is the only part that I want to apply that metallic to. So again, if you make mistakes with this, it's, what's really cool about Flexi is you can just go backwards as far as you need to to get to the point where you want to be. So let me give you another example of doing this same thing, and I'll do it right this time. All right, That was a good example of picking it with the uh, bitmap editing tool. But there's also a digitizing tool on the left-hand side over here as well. And I want to make sure that I have a nice, clean copy of my original. Just to be sure here, let's make sure we have a nice, clean copy of the original. So I'm going to go up here and just open up those cocktails one more time. Be sure there's no silver applied to it yet. OK. This time, instead of using my uh, editing tool, my marquee tool here to select and then changing that, I'm going to choose my uh, create a path tool. This is actually a set of tools that allows you to create paths in FlexiSign. Literally what I'm doing is uh, sometimes I, I have a difficulty in selecting uh, the exact part of the graphic that I'm trying to uh, metallicize using uh, my marquee tool. Well, if that's the case, then what you might want to do is literally make your own vector image around your graphic by hand. Now, I'm going to do this quickly. I'm going to actually make a little mistake here because I want to show you something. OK. Go down to the bottom. And uh, when we're close here, it'll actually close that graphic up. And you notice I didn't do a very good job around my uh, orange right here. Well, again, in FlexiSign, uh, just beneath our, uh, this uh, digitizing tool right here, if I hold my mouse button down, I actually have a series of editing tools that are very easy to use. So I'm going to actually use my three-point arc. And I'll just uh, click somewhere up here. You don't have to be on a point. Just click anywhere you want. right? And it gives you this little nice uh, editing tool here that allows you to uh, grab a point here. You just move that graphic in or out, however you need. Let's say it goes about right there. And then when you double click, it actually applies that cleanup uh, for you. Okay. So again, just set a couple of points wherever you want them on the uh, contour that you're trying to edit. You can go to uh, either of those points. It makes no difference. Stretch it in and out. You know, Kind of fit it to the actual graphic that you want. Double click, and you've got a nice clean graphic there that uh, looks a whole lot better. You can also just click the Apply button over here on the right if you want to apply it as well. It's very easy to use. So it, what I've done is, is that I've, I've, I've actually used vector artwork here to try to uh, get a couple of these glasses. And let's do this one really quickly. And then we'll uh, show you how to actually apply this uh, to our, our metallic, OK? Again, uh, it, what's nice also is Flexi is remembering that I'm working with metallic for that color. So I didn't have to actually go over and choose it. It's already choosing it. And by the way, uh, just a little tip here for Flexi users. If you can't see where you need to close uh, a piece, just go up on the graphic itself. You'll see the icon will actually change to a little plus button. Right click 
and then there's actually a closed path right here that allows you to close things quickly. That might be a fast way to do it. Okay? So again, uh, let's just take these two pieces now. I've got these as vectors. And let's uh, right mouse button on those. And what we're going to do is we're going to combine that by grouping them together. I want them to act as a single uh, unit uh, in my graphic. Okay? I'm going to right click on that and send it to the back. I'm also going to go to my effects menu here, and I'm going to choose uh, uh, under my uh, uh, underbase here, variable underbase. I'm going to pick that, and then we're going to apply it. Remember, all the same steps here, right? When you have uh, all of these selected like this, uh, what happens is, is that you now have uh, a graphic that has the metallic beneath just the martini glasses themselves, all right? So when you go over to your Send to VersaWorks, let's just click on that, and then send it over to VersaWorks. What will happen in VersaWorks is you'll end up with every area that are being applied to that particular bitmap. Again, uh, you're going to verify it. It's got metallic. We go to our setup. We'll maximize that so you can see this. We'll zoom up again so you can go a little bit closer here. There we go. Uh, we'll go to our quality settings and make sure that we choose our uh, MT at the bottom down there. Again, you see how just the glasses got darkened? Just these two, everything else remains the same. The third glass is the same and everything. Uh, and just to verify what we're actually going to metallicize, we're going to look here at this metallic silver. And you'll see that's the only areas that are going to have the metallic applied to it. So just the two martini glasses will have that metallic instead of the entire image. The rest of the image gets printed in uh, CMYK uh, just like you normally would. So again, a, a nice idea would be to maybe use maximum density so you get a nice bright image uh, along with the metallic behind the two martini glasses or you could have done all three. So that's how you can actually pick a certain location. Again, what I like to do, uh, as I said, it's a really good practice, I think, just to verify what's doing metallic, because that way you know whether you've made a slight error or not, but you can always correct that by going back into Flexi, and that's a nice part of it. You've got unlimited undos in Flexi, so you can go back and, and change that all day long if you need to. One last example I want to give you that's very, very important. Let's say that we're using this graphic here, and I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, move this down. Let's, let's take a... Take our graphic here. There we go. And I'm going to delete those two metallics back there in the back. I'm just going to head, go ahead and delete those. So now what we've got is we have just our uh, regular martini glasses that are uh, regular RGB image or CMYK image. It's up to, uh, up to you, whatever those, that is. Okay. But here's what we want to do this time. What I'm going to do is, is I'm actually going to uh, type some lettering over the top of this particular image. So I'm going to go to my text menu. And I'm going to click on top of the image. And let's just call this M-A-R-T-I-N-I-H-E-A-V-E-N. -E -E okay, we got like a, a bar. Maybe this is a lettering that's going to go on top of the mirror in the bar or uh, something like that. Could be a label that they're using on their uh, particular uh, martini bottle. You know, maybe they've got a special vodka or gin or something that they're using. Just create whatever lettering that you want. And what we're basically after here is we might want to choose a color down here on the bottom. Again, we could match that color to if that was a regular green. Remember, we, let's say it was a lime green. You remember, we could actually go back up to color specs, and we could literally uh, match that color to the closest match in our uh, Roland uh, color swatch down here on the bottom. But I'm just going to choose a color for this instance. And I'm going to do something real interesting here. here. What we really want to do is we want to do what's called a knockout. We want a white area behind the lettering so that when we apply the metallic, it's full metallic. If we leave, you know, right now behind the word martini heaven is part of the drawing. So if we leave it like that, what happens is the drawing tends to influence the color of the graphic, and we don't want that to happen. We want a full gold or green or whatever color called martini heaven. And here's how easy it is to do in FlexiSign. 
Uh, what you want to do is just uh, go right click on the actual Martini Heaven and copy it, okay? So it made a copy of it. And then I'm going to right click on it again. And notice there's a couple of ways to paste this. I'm going to choose paste over, okay? Now watch what happens here. I did paste over. It doesn't look like anything happened, but here's what actually happened. I actually have two copies of this lettering exactly on top of each other. So paste over allows you to put that right on top of uh, the other lettering. Here's what I'm going to do now. This is really special in FlexiSign. I'm going to take that lettering that I've selected, just one of those copies, it doesn't matter which one, and I'm going to go to my bitmap menu, and I'm going to convert the lettering into a marquee. Now what that does is that actually creates, it's, it's as if I've digitized the word martini heaven right on top of the bitmap. And I have my bitmap and my marquee selected, so I'm going to press delete on my keyboard, and what it's going to do is something very special. It's actually going to knock out the back of the lettering behind the word martini. Let me prove that to you. I'm going to move the green out of the way here. You see what it did? It just knocked it out of the background there. That was super easy to do. And I have my metallic green right on top of that white area. So I get the full effect of the metallic over the graphic. The graphic is not going to interfere with my metallic color. So I get a nice bright uh, metallic color. One other thing that I might do, and take just as an example, let me zoom in on this a bit. And by the way, you'll see uh, Flexi is quite accurate here in terms of hiding that knockout. See, what, what could happen in some softwares is you could end up with like a little, little white space like that, and that wouldn't look too good on your graphics, would it? So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to bring that back on top of it so it's exactly right, right? Remember, I just did that by that pasting the uh, two copies right on top of each other, right? Remember, use the one for the knockout, the other one is, is uh, perfect, okay? So let's put those right on top of each other. And if I'm a little worried about, you know, a little white space around the edges or something like that, what I can do is I can actually take my graphic, this, this, uh, the one that's supposed to be right on top of that white there, and I'm going to hold the control key down this time, and I'm going to go to one of the corners here, and I'm just going to pull on it just a hair. What that's going to do is that's going to expand the size of the graphic. Excuse me, that's going to be the Alt key. My mistake. I'm going to go right to the corner right here. Okay, just go right to the corner. Pick that corner right there up. Hold the Alt key down, and I'm going to pull on it just a little bit. And what will happen in Flexi is, is that it's going to expand the lettering just a little bit larger than the actual graphic itself. So what that does is that gives you sort of a, a little bit of a uh, edge that's just slightly larger than the knockout. And that will hide any of that white space around the edges. Very, very important uh, capability in FlexiSign. It's kind of nice to use, you know. It just uh, keeps it exactly over the top there and expands it just slightly. At this point then, we can send that over to our VersaWorks. I'm going to click over on VersaWorks here and send that job over. And what I have is I have a CMYK bitmap that I'm printing, and I have a metallic Martini Heaven that I want to use as a metallic uh, color. I want to make sure that that's actually going to happen. So we're going to go down. You'll see here's my graphic down here underneath. That's the one we're working on. I'm going to go to my settings. All right. We'll expand that so you can see it. Zoom up on it a bit. And this is just as I do this every time I use the uh, system to create uh, graphics like this. I want to verify that only Martini Heaven is our uh, metallic. So we want to make sure we turn on our metallics or whatever uh, media that you have. And VersaWorks has dozens of different profiles, right? I'm going to make sure that I uh, have my spot color turned on because I want to make sure it prints that nice bright uh, you know metallic color okay and to verify that that's the only thing that's using metallic I'll actually go to my metallic silver here and you can see that's the only thing that where the metallic is and because it's a knockout because there's no image behind that lettering I'm literally going to get that nice uh, bright greens metallic silver in that location so this is good for things like 
uh, labels. If you're going to put a label together and you want your lettering to actually be metallic with the image to be CMYK over the, over the top of that image, that's, that's an easy way to do it. So we've, we've covered a lot uh, in the last few minutes. There's been quite a bit that we've talked about. Uh, we went through uh, not only how to start out, which is to make sure you update your Flexi, but we also talked about a number of other topics. We went through uh, bringing up the metallic metals uh, in, in FlexiSign. We also brought up custom colors that we could make. We talked about using them as uh, vector artwork. We, we combined the vector artwork uh, with the, metal, with the uh, CMYK image to give you a, a, a metallic over the image. We also just uh, did a knockout very easily within the software. What we're really say, seeing here is the ability to take FlexiSign and use it as a very nice design tool and a very easy workflow with VersaWorks. Uh, I want to allow just a few minutes for some questions here because it's uh, certainly a very good time to, to ask those. I know that uh, we have some folks that are answering those questions um, very easily, so I want to uh, be sure we, uh, we get those answered as well. Let me bring up my little question box here. Hang on one second, folks. And that way I can see your questions also. And if there's some that I can answer, I will certainly do that. Uh, otherwise, we can follow up uh, with you folks uh, as well. Let me go all the way to the top here. Uh, let's see. I've got some here. Uh, are the Max Flexi updates for this available on the SAI website? Uh, yes, they are. We can get to... Uh, you know, uh, make sure that we get to the tech support folks there at Flexi, and they can certainly uh, help you with that as well. A uh, couple of other questions were asked: uh, Is there a way to get a bright red in uh, in the metallic? Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, using a uh, you know the metallic spot color palette, uh, you saw me make uh, a nice uh, uh, color there. Remember, we could change the to a custom palette if we had to. We could actually enrich the red. Uh, there's a specific red that's a very, very good uh, red that can be used with this. And you can get, uh, again, you want, probably want to choose uh, maximum impact as well to get a nice bright color out of it as well. Uh, we have some other questions coming in here. These are all being recorded, so you'll have these available to you as well. Um, let's see. Uh, is your presentation available to us by email? Well, I believe that uh, the uh, folks from Roland will be able to address that with you. Uh, you'll be able to see uh, this presentation again, I'm sure. Um, there's a question here. When trying to create the knockout on a raster image, can you just paste over the lettering with the default white? You could. Uh, it's, it's much easier to do that uh, process, as I mentioned there, where you actually convert it to the marquee. Uh, that certainly is true. You could use the white color behind it. Uh, that would work. Uh, but but it was so easy just to take that lettering and uh, convert it into a marquee and then just hit delete. That way you're you're definitely going to uh, get everything perfectly lined up and everything. You might want to review uh, that section there uh, again. Uh, Eric, I am done with the presentation. I know there's a few more questions on here. Um, we appreciate everyone uh, coming and, and listening to this, and thank you so much for all of your uh, time and being here.